Hello and welcome to another Geekiverse video. We continue our LEGO Lord of the Rings review series as I wait to get my hands on some of the newer sets. Today it is set numbered 9473, Mines of Moria, which captures one of the most famous scenes from the first movie in an interesting fashion. As you can see, the builds are not really connected to each other, instead they work well as standalone pieces. An approach I generally enjoy from LEGO, since it does let you set up the scenery in a way you find fitting. In addition to that, we get 4 Fellowship members, 2 Moria Goblins and 1 large Cave Troll figure. But let's save that for later. Let me get the bad stuff off my chest first. Stickers! Loads and loads of stickers! Just why did they have to include so many of them in this set? Although granted they add for some brilliant detailing, However, it is such a pain, at least for me, to put on LEGO stickers. I much prefer printed bricks, as I have mentioned several times in my previous videos. Oh well, what you gonna do? Well, with that out of the way, let's focus on the other stuff. This set includes four, or should I say six separate builds? I will clear up the number confusion later, but let us start with a skeleton well. This build recreates possibly the most cringeworthy scene from the movie. The part where Pippin accidentally knocks down the skeleton into the hole for every goblin in Moria to hear. The play feature of this build serves precisely to, for that purpose, to make the skeleton fall into the hole along with the little bucket and chain. Doesn't get much louder than that really. The second build is Balin's tomb, with a famous inscription in dwarven runes which read Here lies Balin, son of Fundin, lord of Moria. You can check out Balin while he was still alive in my Hobbit Hole review which I did earlier this week. Anyway, this tomb works with a kind of a clunky play feature. You have to really hit the lever on the side hard if you want to pop the lid open. However, the visual design of this tomb is done really well. On to the two larger builds. We take a look at the door first. The door which the goblins break through in the movie is actually barred by a big axe and can of course be opened up. Also we get a lot of stickers detailing around the door itself. Lastly there is another play feature here. A part of the build can be flanked off, again with the help of a simple lever from the side, which is blocked by this sticking up holder piece or whatever you would like to call it. The piece of the wall actually does get flinged off pretty far, which is always a good idea I guess. Final build is this kind of elevated walkway with a bunch of columns and little details like a skeleton head and all too many stickers. The design is however very good and captures the movie feel. Now this part can actually be broken down into three subsections, that's why I mentioned the build count confusion earlier. Two of the smaller subsections get a column, which can fall using the mechanism on the back side. Another play feature here is the chest in the middle subsection, which can be pushed out of the build using another lever on the back side. So basically each of the subsections gets its own play feature. There are additional details like gems, books and even some spare weaponry scattered around the set, which all add nicely to the overall look. But make no mistake, this is a hardcore playset. With that said, let's move on to the minifigures. Mm, did I just say mini? I meant big. Big troll big figures. This is one of the rare big figures which are actually well executed and certainly makes sense. Along with his menacing club and print even on his back, he makes one badass troll you do not want to mess with. Supporting the troll we get two Moria goblins in this set, which have a hairpiece with pointy ears much like the elven ones, only with a lot more greasy hair I guess. One of them gets a kind of morning star while the other wields a big sword and shield. No need for alternate faces here since the goblins are always just angry. Two of the four fellowship members are exclusive to this set, so LEGO just forces you to buy it if you're a hardcore fan. You cannot be missing out on Pippin, he looks like all the hobbits with a hairpiece to hide his alternate face, a cloak and a hobbit sized sword. What would the Moria set be without a dwarf, or should I say the dwarf? Gimli gets one big axe and a smaller one as well to wreck some extra havoc. 
Other than that, it's his signature helm and beard, hiding an alternate face underneath all that dwarven headgear. Boromir is the second exclusive minifigure to this set, and he is really done well. The shield is probably his defining feature, however the print is done very well also. Hairpiece again hides an alternate face, and he also gets a sword and cloak to help him in his fighting endeavors. Finally we get the pretty haired elf. Legolas comes with a hairpiece which is similar to the goblins, only much much prettier. He must be using some damn expensive shampoo. As is the case with the rest of the gang, he gets an alternate face and wields his trusty bow. All that is left is to summarize. This is definitely a playset first and foremost, even though it does do a good job of recreating the movie scene as well. Just for that it, I have to give it some extra points. Granted the play features are not the most innovative ones, but they work well for the most part. <coughs> Doom. <coughs> And the stickers are a huge downer in the building process. At least for me, some people like stickers though, even if I don't really know any. With those minor flaws, this is still a great set, and if you add the big troll and the two exclusive minifigures to the equation, well, a must have for any Lord of the Rings fan. That does it for today, hope you enjoyed the review, don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. Until the next one, bye bye